<laughs> Welcome to our next edition of Cultivating Connections in the Time of COVID. I realized I didn't put us on gallery view, so you didn't get to see that signed. I apologize. Um, we are here with our two wonderful presenters who are teaching us a little bit of ASL, American Sign Language, and about deaf culture, Tara and Carolyn. And today we are getting a brand new lesson. If you did not see us last week, uh, that lesson number one is on our YouTube channel, National Grange. Um, and these lessons are sponsored and brought to you by Grange Foundation, our partner. And so I'm going to turn it directly over to you guys in a moment after I remind people if you have questions or comments, you're welcome to put them on our Facebook feed as you're watching this and we will attempt to get to all of those uh, during this live session. So thank you for joining us, ladies. Hello, my name is Tara Plaquetta. I'm, I'm joining you today from Florida. Um, I am an interpreter for the deaf and um, I'm gonna start our second lesson today with a little bit about some fun deaf facts, okay? So the first, um, the first fact that I thought was gonna be really cool was everybody is probably um, missing some sports right now. And in, let's start with baseball. Baseball, um, you know, when the pitcher and the catcher communicate, they use some signs, right? So all of you know that, that there are signs communicated, not signs, but more like signals. So um, Hen or the man's name was William Hoy, and he was a deaf baseball player back in the day. And he was the one who created um, the ability to use those signs to communicate with the pitcher and the catcher. So I thought that was really cool to share. Um, it is baseball season and we're missing it on TV right now. And uh, my son, his, his league has, is on hold right now, but I just thought that was a cool fact. Moving on to football, um, all of you know, and maybe you've heard that the football huddle was created um, first from Gaeta University football team. So the players, when they would compete against another deaf school, they would come together and inside they would sign to each other so the other team didn't see what the next play was going to be so the football huddle was also created by a deaf by a deaf player um let's see do we have any fans of america's next top model or dancing with the stars have any of you seen um the deaf actor that was on those two shows his name is niall DeMarco, his name sign is this, and he was deaf, used an interpreter through the whole two seasons of his show, and he won both of them. So right now he's a, a real big deaf supporter in the community and trying, you know, for immersion. Actually, my daughter just showed me the other day, he was on the TV show, um, What Would You Do? And they, he was in a restaurant and people were, or the waiter would not serve him. And they were seeing what people, other patrons would do if, if somebody was discriminating against the deaf. And um, people didn't recognize him, he had a hat on, but it was neat to see that everybody thought that he should be as included as the other, as the other customers. Um, let's see, Miss America, there was a deaf, a woman named Heather Whitestone, and she won the Miss America back in the 1990s, or in the 90s, yeah, in the 1990s. And so this just proves too that like even deafness doesn't stop you from doing anything. And the more language that we can learn to communicate with that community, it makes it, and it helps it become more, you know, included and, and immersed into our hearing world. Um, Marley Matlin, she's a deaf actress and she's on a lot of shows. And if any of you watch, and maybe during this isolation time period, you're watching Switched at Birth, 
Um, there are many, many deaf actresses and actors on there. And it's, it's a great program that I recommend for the whole family. And the last, the last thing I was gonna share was every day um, when you step in your car, there's one item in your car that a deaf person has created and we, we use it every day. Does anybody have any guesses? Hmm. Did you say a signal? Not the signal, but that's a good, that's a good, that's a good guess. It's the rear view mirror. So it's the mirror. So the deaf person created that um, because they couldn't see or they couldn't hear, you know, other cars coming up behind and honking and whatnot. So they created this idea to have a mirror right there. And now all, you know, all hearing people use that and deaf at the same time. So I thought that was just kind of cool, some cool facts. Um, let me see, anything to mention, Carolyn, before I get started? Um, when you're talking about the famous deaf people, there was a woman that graduated from the school that I teach at now. Her name is Linda Bove. She does the Sesame Street, the signing that happens there. Um, I don't know how old she is now, but in the day there's books and things like that, that she graduated from our MKSD school a long time ago. So that, when you that popped up. Um, when you're finished, I'm going to go through the Grange signs that people had asked for. So whatever you finished, then I will, I did some homework and I investigated to see what we called the people a long time ago and what we call them now. So we'll do the comparison and we'll show them the signs that we have and do the best of our ability for that part. And then we'll go through our Congo lesson together and do that we'll save that or you want to do that now we can do the grange later want to do congo you want to start with congo sure okay i have a special guest right. today with this is <laughs> smile this is my son his name is donovan he's 11 years old um and today he is um letting us use his bird because we thought that it'd be kind of fun to start with some animal signs. And we're gonna use Congo, that's the name of the bird. Um, we're gonna use him as an example um, for some signs. So I'm gonna sign them and you're gonna copy. And if you have any questions, then you can post it in Facebook and Amanda will let us know and we can go over it again or whatnot. But I'll, I will go slow. Um, okay, so first we'll take a look at Congo, and his name is Congo. It's C O N G O. You always finger spell, and that's the sign bird. Yes, bird. You always sign um, pronouns, um, person, a place, or a thing. You always finger spell it. So you're going to always finger spell your name your last name, your city, the street you live on, the city that you live in, um, the country that you're from, you always, always finger spell those things, okay? So if we look at Congo, this is a sign for bird, okay? Bird, it has um, a pointer finger and your thumb and you bring it up to your mouth. Now, if, if Congo was a duck, I would use two fingers, but it's just a bird, so we're gonna use one finger. Um, if you take the same movement and you do this, that means the number 20. So just a little bit of, of side, a side note there, but last week I had talked about um, the importance of where you make your sign. So we're going to, it's the same hand shape and the same movement, but we're gonna go up here um, for bird, okay? So that's the sign for bird and we're gonna do the colors um, of the bird. So everybody just take a peek at, at the bird's color, step up. Yeah, step up, come on. Um, we've got green, okay, green. This is this, um, the hand shape of a G and you're gonna shake it. So we're gonna shake our colors. There's a G, yellow, 
there's a Y. You're going to shake the, the Y. All right. And he's got a red tail. So red comes from like right around the mouth, like lipstick. So this is a sign for red. Again, using the index finger, this is the color red. Turn it is bird. Around this way is red. Okay. Um, and he has blue. He has blue underneath his wing. Oh, we didn't like that. Blue, <laughs> I'm gonna try and not get bit during this here, Donovan. Um, no. You really like shiny things. So um, blue, we are going to take the letter for B, step up, and we're gonna shake it like that. So blue, okay? So those are his colors, green, yellow, red, blue. All right, the sign for food, Okay, so what he eats, food, food, okay? If I was signing to eat, I would sign it one time. It's time to eat. If you move your sign two times, it's the verb, eat, all right? Um, what Congo eats is seeds, okay? So you can, you can try and shake this bud hand shape over your hand like this. You can do it like this. They're both right. Seeds. Okay. He also eats fruit. Hand shape uh, is an F in sign language. The letter F made up here by the mouth. Fruit. Fruit. Congo eats vegetables. The number two or the letter V. And you take it on your right here, the same place that we did fruit. You're going to place the fingertip and turn it. Vegetables, vegetables. Okay. Um, okay. So the sign for sit is um, is this sit. But for the bird, because he has talons, we're going to sit on it. We're going to perch. So we can sign perch. And I'm showing you that it's bird bird talons. Okay. It looks like that perch. All right. Um, let's see, feather, feather. Again, we're using what we use for fruit. It's the hand shape of an F. You're going from your chin up to your ear, feather. And Carolyn, what did you sign? What was the other one that you used? Sometimes the kids will use um, feather because it's on the wing, so they do the feather. Feather, feather. okay, cool, feather. Um, wing. Oh yeah, you shake your wings. Wing, oh, all right. <laughs> um, he's participating really good. You've got fly, okay? So this is, for, this is for the bird flying, all right, flying. Not like an airplane fly, that's different. We're talking about the bird flying, all right, fly. Um, okay, so this is like he has a beak. So we're gonna sign beak. It's made up at the nose. It's an X, an X letter in the alphabet. You're turning it out, and it is the sign for beak, mm -hmm. like with eagle beak. All right. I signed before bite. Your left hand or your dominant hand. Your non-dominant hand is gonna is gonna stay out like this. Your dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you're gonna be using your right hand to sign, and if you're left-handed, you're gonna be using your left hand as the dominant hand that signs. So I'm a right-handed, I'm gonna sign bite. Okay, right here in the flesh of your finger, bite. All right, bite, good. Okay, eyes, eyes. That's pretty, that's pretty clear, eyes. Get the top of my head in there, eyes. Okay, um, toys. Okay, so I, I typically finger spell this toys, T O Y S. Or we talked about last week how you use the first letter and it's called initializing. So you can say um, the bird plays with toys. This is a sign for play. Play, it's a Y. We, I showed you last week cow. You take those Y's and you shake them. Play, play, play. Y or a T, 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 T for toys. All right. Um, the sign for tree. 
tree. You're gonna keep your hand open. This is like a, t a tree standing up. Your other hand is gonna hold your elbow. Your dominant hand is, is making a tree sign, okay? Tree, good. And if you wanted to sign forest, you would take that tree and you would do many trees. Forest, okay, so tree. Um, just a few more. Um, so he, so Congo is, let me show you the sign first for age, okay? Like an old man who pulls on his beard like this, this is a sign for old. So when someone asks you, how old are you? How old are you? You'd answer, I am old or age. And then you would sign a number. Okay, Donovan's 11. So, okay, he old 11. He is 11 years old. The bird is old five months. This is a sign for month. You take your index finger on your non-dominant hand, your dominant hand goes down, um, the back of the index goes on the back of the other one. Month. Go ahead, Amanda, you're the guinea pig. Month, month. <laughs> so you would say five months old. So age, five months, six months, seven months, eight months. You get the point, 10 months old. If they're one year old, you go out like this, one, two, three, and you just go with your age from that point on. And we'll do, we'll do numbers another week. Um, and then the last thing is if we say, what is your bird's name? You would say my bird's name, Congo, okay? And that's spelled my bird name, C-O-N-G-O. But the way that we that we use English to say my bird's name is Congo um, is how we do it. Um, if nobody has any questions, Amanda, about repeating any signs or anything, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn for um, the Grange signs. Okay. We good? Good. Okay. Long time ago, there was different um, Grange signs that we used when I was interpreting for a deaf man that had joined the Grange as a member. So we're going to compare today the different name signs. And if there's any other things that you people may want, just let us know. So the first one we have, we did master. Now it's changed since then, and now it's president, right? So you have master from a long time ago when we used it. Now you guys do president, president. The next one they had, we had was, oh, now remember everyone from the national grange, the subordinate grange, they all have sashes. So what we used to do is we'd use the first letter of the overseer. So you had overseer, right? So we started from the heart down to your hip and made the sash of overseer. I believe now they call them vice president. So it's a V to a P, vice president. Vice president is what they call the overseer now. The next one was L lecturer from a long time ago, but now they call the people program directors. So you have a P over here and then you flip it onto the other side program. And these are your X's that Tara was talking about before. And you go back and forth like a, like a steering wheel. So you have program direct, and then I do person this way with just the body shape. I used to do peas. I don't do that anymore. So that's what the, the deaf adults like best. Okay, so we have master or president, overseer or vice president, lecturer, or program director. Stuart is the same. So Stuart, we put down in an S, Stuart. 
And it's the same as the new Grange words, there's Stuart. So I'm going to keep it the same. Assistant. Stuart. Then we, we kind of cheated a little bit. We you can do L-A-S if you want, the letters L-A-S for lady assistant. Or you can just cheat and say L-A-S, whichever is easier. Whoever, if it's someone's interpreting, it's probably easier to do L-A-S. Um, you have your chaplain as in church. Good. I'm watching a man and see how I'm doing. You have treasurer. So this is your, like what for? Put that in your palm and then put it out. So treasurer, treasurer. Then we have the pencil. You have a pencil here and you're writing on your tablet. Secretary. Now you have your, to make life easier, we said series is coming down with a sash. We did Pomona as fruit with the sash. You can do the P if you want. So you have your P up here and then pull it down. If you have flora is flowers and do the F if you want to come down. And then you had, we had, I really didn't have a sign for this long time. We had executive committee, EC, that's all we use. So if you want to do EC and come down, we really didn't have a sign for them. They would like, the, we would explain that they're the assistant to the master and they help with discussions and different um, important details. I'm missing that. Say it again. No, don't do it again. Sign it. Oh, gatekeeper. Yeah, I did miss him, huh? Good job. Good spelling. Okay, so we have we had door protect person. Door protect. Yeah, you had door out here. Open that sucker up and then protect person put the put the x up on your hands don't go like that go like that's it right there gatekeeper so that would be the sign most of them the only three that changed really were the master the overseer and the lecturer that's the only three names that really have changed since the start of time that i can see um anything else the program director was the lecturer. Where's your Please voice? President again. Just the program, meaning like tonight's program will consist of this, 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 this. So we had well, the lecturer about, was always. Go ahead. No, just talking about tonight's program, not not specifically talking about the program director or the lecturer, but we had talked about doing program and and camp and um oh, yes did you are, are you still going oh i see what you're doing I, those on my other list sorry yes we had talked about the flag some of the grain signs you have the flag you had the program you had camp And then you have the sash. Do you have other do you have other vocab that we were talking about? Um, I have the Bible. Did you do the Bible yet? Yeah, we had talked about um, where the master is, and then there was the table with the Bible in the middle, and then in the back. So you know, you visualizing your brain hall. And where, where are these people? And that would be a good way to practice as you have, as you're learning the signs, you can set up your own, your own Grange Hall and have your, you know, just practice who sits here and who sits here and who sits here and 
And that's how it's a very visual language. So you can set up your grain tall in the, in the space in front of you. So that just gives you a cool visual and a, just a way to practice for yourself. And again, Carolyn had, had made all the signs so you can, you can practice those. Oh, uh, yes. Can you go from so, the top again with all of them just one more time so everyone can practice with us? And if they want, they can turn their sound off to see if they can catch what you're doing. You want me to mix them up? You can, but definitely tell what they are after. Actually, Tara, you're going to voice for me. Okay. Okay. Treasurer. Flora. Master or president. Assistant. Stewart. Or store, assistant store. Thank you. Secretary. Vice President. Okay. Series. Maybe Assistant Stort. Good. Lecturer. Is that executive committee? Okay. I don't know if I did this one already. Flora. This one was what? Is that Flora? No, Flora was the flowers. Pomona. Right. Oh, Pomona. Pomona. Okay, Pomona. Because of the goddess of fruit. Of the fruit goddess, yes. Goddess of fruit. Got it. Chaplain. Mm -hmm. Chaplain. Flag. <laughs> we have a farm here, apparently. Uh, Bible. Bible, camp, <laughs> I love you, <laughs> good job, um, Amanda, you need anything, um, Donovan has school at six o'clock, Mm -hmm. So well, if they have any questions for Tara or myself, they we can do them now before she has to sign off. Oh. Your voice is off. See, and now what everyone knows what it's like to be deaf and try to read lips. Um, <laughs> we didn't have any specific questions other than can you repeat president again? So I think we can all do president. Sorry, my head's not in the picture. <laughs> and several people mentioned that this would be a good presentation for either a community Grange program or at national session. So we hope that you will download it from YouTube and show it to people or share it. Uh, this will be available on YouTube soon after we get off of here. Do you have any suggestions for anything that you would like to be taught Next week, we will be doing this at 4.30 on Fridays for the foreseeable future here, as long as Tara and Caroline will put up with us. And so if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments and we'll let them know 
So they're ready for next week. Also next week, we'll probably have Q and A. Tara and I usually meet together on Wednesdays. So if that, whatever you get, if you have any input, will be for the fourth week. Fourth week, we'll set it up, whatever the people want. We have a Q and A for, we'll discuss it on Wednesday when the two of us get together or this weekend or something like that. So um, we have that for next week. And then after that, whatever the population wants. And all of the uh, signs that Tara provided, the bird and colors and things like that are available on a video that they've set up and pre-recorded prior to this that will be available on our YouTube channel as well. So look for that. It's called Congo Lesson Episode 2. And that should be available by 6 p.m. Eastern tonight. Thank you. Last question. What's the sign for Grange? We did this last week. G. G. It's a G, but it goes like a farmer. Farmer is this, and then G is that. Mm -hmm. Yep, your thumb is gonna is gonna touch your face right there by your chin. G on both sides. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, ladies, very much. We'll see you again next week. We can't wait to learn some more. Bye. Take care.